All right. Thank you all for coming today. Since taking the gavel in January, the Committee on Oversight and Accountability has accelerated its investigation of the Biden family's domestic and international business practices that we began last Congress. I want to be clear. This committee is investigating President Biden and his family's shady business deals that capitalize on Joe Biden's public office and risked our country's national security. This committee has a duty to ask questions and pursue the facts no matter where they take us. Through the committee's investigation, we intend to provide transparency to the American people and reach legislative solutions. In only four months since obtaining subpoena authority, we have made astonishing progress. Today, we'll talk about that progress. First, we want to discuss information the committee has learned since our last press conference in November. New information investigators have uncovered regarding the transfer of money from foreign entities to the Biden family. M many of the wire payments occurred while Joe Biden was vice president and leading the United States efforts in these countries. First instance, while Vice President Biden was lecturing Romania on anti-corruption policies, in reality he was a walking billboard for his son and family to collect money. Hunter Biden and his associates capitalized on a lucrative financial relationship with the Romanian national who was under investigation for and later convicted of corruption in Romania. The Bidens received over $1 million for the deal. And 16 of the 17 payments to their associates account that funneled the Biden's money occurred while Joe Biden was vice president. In fact, the money stops flowing from the Romanian national soon after Joe Biden leaves the vice presidency. This is a pattern of influence peddling. This appears separate from any payment Hunter received from his work connecting this individual to a U.S. law firm. We'll also provide further information regarding the Biden's relationship with China. This includes two individuals the committee is particularly concerned about. One of them, Yi Jinming, had close ties to the highest levels of the Chinese Communist Party and operated a multi-billion dollar energy company with access to large sums of money. We'll discuss how the Bidens received millions of dollars from this individual through the use of shell companies and wire transfers. In March, the committee released its first bank records memorandum that showed a Biden associate, Rob Walker, used his company to funnel money from the Chinese to various Biden family members. Democrats dismissed the evidence, even though it was based on bank records directly from the bank. The Democrats on the Oversight Committee received the same records as the Republicans, and they were able to verify the information. Democrats said all the bank records showed were Papa John's and Starbucks receipts. They deliberately chose to misconstrue and deny what was clearly in front of them. Hunter Biden's representatives claimed the money was, quote, good faith seed funds, but could not explain why those funds had to go through an intermediary in what appears to be an attempt to hide the transfers from the Chinese. They also couldn't explain why the Bidens received over $1 million in 16 different wire transfers over a period of three months to at least five different banks. The president, when confronted with this information, said it wasn't true. Instead of being with, honest with the American people, President Biden has claimed since the 2020 election that his family has not received money from China. That was a lie in 2020, and he continues to lie to the American people now. The Bidens have received millions of dollars from China. It is inconceivable that the president did not know it. The White House refuses to correct the president's statements, showing the president is now using the federal government to run interference for his families and his own role in these schemes. Now I want to say a few remarks about the developments last week. A week ago, I sent a subpoena to the FBI for a form that a whistleblower has alleged is in the FBI's possession. We hope the FBI will be transparent and forthcoming. 
and provide the oversight committee with the 1023 form we have subpoenaed. If they do, the committee will assess the form it has subpoenaed from the FBI and has been my practice. We will report to you only facts when they are verified and indisputable. This committee will not pursue witch hunts or string the American people along for years with false promises of evidence that is beyond circumstantial evidence as Representative Adam Schiff and the Democrats did for years. I trust the whistleblower. A subpoena from this committee is a powerful tool that I do not take lightly. The level of detail provided to Senator Grassley led me to conclude a subpoena was warranted and I stand by that assessment. I will say this, when Senator Grassley approached me with the information the whistleblower provided, it was because of the information we've learned through this committee's own investigation that indicated to me the whistleblower's allegations are consistent with our independent findings. Those findings are what I called you here today to discuss. The committee has reviewed thousands of bank records from individuals and companies affiliated with the Bidens and their associates. It has received these bank records pursuant to four subpoenas I've issued to different banks. These were targeted and specific subpoenas, and each was different based on the information we believed the banks possessed. Every one of those subpoenas returned valuable information that had been unreported and that contributed to this committee's understanding of how the Bidens conducted their businesses. The committee is concerned by the complicated, suspicious network of over 20 companies we have identified the Bidens and their associates used to enrich themselves. Most of these companies were limited liability companies formed during Joe Biden's vice presidency. The bank records show the Biden family, their associates, and their companies received over $10 million from foreign nationals and their companies. Some of that money came from a Chinese company and went to Hunter Biden's company. Other transfers occurred with the help of Rob Walker, who then sent it on to different Biden family members. This is not how lawful businesses operate. Chinese nationals affiliated with the Bidens created limited liability companies in the United States and then in a short period of time transferred their interest to a Chinese company that sent money to the Bidens. This is not normal. Hunter Biden and his associates courted business in countries that correlated directly with Joe Biden's work as vice president. This is also not normal. It is not ethical. And this is why we need legislative solutions. Our purpose here is to provide legislative solutions to prevent this unethical behavior from ever happening again. This investigation is about investigating allegations of corruption and fraud at the highest levels of the federal government. This should be a bipartisan issue. This committee is considering legislation that would ensure these sorts of business practices do not continue for Democrats or Republicans. Specifically, the committee is crafting legislative solutions aimed at deficiencies it has identified in ethics laws and disclosure laws for immediate family members of Vice President and the President. These deficiencies potentially place American national security and American interest at risk. Additionally, the committee is considering legislation that would strengthen reporting requirements related to certain foreign transactions involving senior elected officials' family members. Finally, the committee is evaluating the Bank Secrecy Act and anti-money laundering laws to determine whether financial institutions have the available tools and support from federal agencies to thwart illegal money laundering and foreign corruption activity. As I said, I'm very pleased with the progress the committee is making in this investigation. However, due to the information we're releasing today and further developments the committee is aware of, the investigation will enter a new phase now that is armed with information obtained in the bank records. I will soon issue a new round of subpoenas to banks for specific targeted information. I will also provide one more opportunity for certain Biden associates, including his art gallerist and Rob Walker, to cooperate willingly with this investigation. Finally, I'm publicly releasing the second bank's bank accounts memorandum to the American people so they can see for themselves the activities the Biden family is engaged in, despite the president's statement to the contrary. I want to thank the people and financial institutions that have cooperated with this investigation so far. I also want to encourage more people to come forward and let them know that their information will be kept private 
and confidential. To my Democrat colleagues, I want to say that this investigation will continue to move forward. Do you want to continue covering up the Biden's influence peddling schemes when the evidence is being placed right in front of you? With or without Democrat support, we will continue working to deliver the answers, transparency, and accountability that the American people deserve. I now turn to Andy Biggs, who will provide some information. Thank you, thank you, Chairman Comer. Uh, we appreciate your leadership on this very, very significant issue to the direction of this country, and we appreciate your leadership and appreciate my colleagues who are here today, um, and also the, the great staff that has done such incredible work um, on behalf of this committee in, in reviewing these records and, and helping us to obtain them. Thank you. And thank you to uh, those of you who are here uh, from the media today. So when we talk about the Biden family and associates, I think it's important for the American people to understand what, mean, what we mean uh, when we're talking about these associates. What, what, what are we really getting at? First, they, they use them as vehicles to move money directly into Biden family accounts. Why is that? It's because they were looking to obfuscate and hide where the money was coming from. For example, the Bidens used their associate Rob Walker to bring in millions of dollars from China and Romania. Walker's limited liability company, Robinson Walker LLC, paid Hunter, James, Halley, and others in the Biden <coughs> network more than $2 million after foreign money hit his account. One third to the Bidens. That was the pattern. For example, on March 1st, 2017, only two months after Joe Biden left office, Robinson Walker received a $3 million wire from State Energy HK Limited, a Chinese entity. The next day, one third of that money, $1,065,000, went to the bank account in Abu Dhabi of the company EEIG, which was controlled by James Gilead, another Biden associate. Over the next three months, Robinson Walker LLC sent 16 incremental payments of to more than uh, to, to over five different Biden accounts totaling $1,065,692. This included payments to James Biden, who received five wires and over $50,000, who did no discernible work to earn that money. A third to Gilliard, a third to the Bidens. What was State Energy HK Limited? That is a second class of Biden associates, the people from whom the Bidens conducted business. State Energy HK Limited was a company controlled by Yi Jiaming. Yi was a Chinese billionaire who was a, who was reportedly the former Deputy Secretary General, excuse me, Dep Deputy Secretary Council for an international outreach arm for the People's Liberation Army. It's called the China Association for International Friendly Contact. According to a U.S. agency, that organization is a platform for deploy deploying undercover intelligence gatherers. Chairman Yi started an energy company called CEFC, China. Yi explained in a speech to the committee uh, that the committee has obtained and translated into English that CEFC China's vision is very simple. It is to obtain overseas resources and serve the national strategy not U.S. national strategy, Chinese national strategy. And Chinese national strategy is Chinese Communist Party's strategy. Yi was close to Chinese President Xi Jinping and welcomed at least one foreign president to Beijing with Xi. With Xi. The DOJ has referenced Yi and CEFC in a scheme bribing African leaders. The other Chinese national I want, I'll mention now is Gong Wendong who did work for Yi in America. When Yi needed to do business in America, he often looked to Gong Wandong. The amount of money Yi was sending to Gong Wandong was staggering. From June through August of 2017 alone, Yi transferred to Gong Wandong in America more than $130 million. Yi met with Hunter Biden in February 2017 and gave him a diamond reportedly worth tens of thousands of dollars as a gift. 
In August of 2017, Yi, through Gong Wandong, opened up a business with Hunter and James Biden called Hudson West 3, based here in Washington, D.C. And Hunter wanted to get Joe Biden's keys to the office, and they could all share office space together, according to an email verified by the Washington Post. But things didn't go as planned because the Chinese detained Yi in March of 2018 for fraud. In an email to Gong Wandong and another associate, Hunter tried to explain away the last year of doing business together. This is an email that has also been verified by the Washington Post. Hunter wrote, and I quote, I am not in a joint venture with CEFC. I'm not partners with CEFC, and I'm not employed nor funded by CEFC, close quote. But Hunter was funded by CEFC, as Ms. Mace will explain. I'm extremely concerned about the president's connections to these individuals he was supposedly meant to share office space with and is denied knowing anything about these transactions and these business dealings and also is denied receiving any money for himself or his family from Chinese connections. That has been proven to be a lie. And I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaks. Next we have Ms. Mace. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Chairman Comer, for your leadership. In less than 100 days of subpoena power, this has been one of the most in-depth in investigations the House Oversight Committee has ever had in recent history. And I would hope that the media here today would put as much attention and interest and focus on this as they have a former president. For years, the left has said, no one is above the law. Well, put your money where your mouth is and prove that because the American people do not trust the federal government, they don't trust Congress, they don't even trust current presidents because of the kind of possible and alleged corruption that we see at every level of government and no one is ever held to account. I try to call the balls and strikes regardless of whether or not you have an R or a D by your name. I've been accused, all of us have been, over this particular issue that we're conspiracy theorists, we're not. What we're proving to you today is showing you actual bank records, actual evidence of shell companies and businesses or more businesses and more Bidens involved that we knew of. You have to issue more subpoenas because every time we turn over Iraq, there's more information. There's more possible corruption. There's more possible allegations that need to be investigated. This is what we know today. Money flowed from the Chinese Communist Party aligned with, uh, with individuals into American shell companies. And then that money was wired and transferred to Biden family members. This could be the most corrupt scheme in American politics where a sitting vice president, where we saw members of his family, nine members so far, there may be more, that were enriched from countries all over the world. And we're providing more information about Romania today. We know about China. We know that the president denied this during an election in 2020, continues to deny it to this day. And we want uh, everyone held accountable if they have, they have violated their oath of office. Um, we shouldn't have folks that are in office that are betraying their oath of office. We shouldn't have people in office that are betraying their country. If they're paying loads of cash to their family members from adversaries of ours around the world, it's wrong, whether you have a, a Republican or a Democrat by your name. And uh, we saw evidence of intentionally taking steps to hide the sources of money coming directly from China through a series of financial gymnastics. Joe Biden's political career uh, was winding down at the time, and this was one of the Biden family's last chances to cash in on the name. We have evidence of Chairman Yi Jingming, who is believed to be affiliated with Chinese Communist Party intelligence organizations and has even been accused of gathering intel for Communist China. Yi started CEFC in China. His agent in America, Gong Wendong, which, uh, which uh, Andy Biggs mentioned earlier, formed CEFC Infrastructure Investment US on May 11, 2017. On May 18th of 2017, Dong used one of his Chinese companies, Shang Huaxin, to fund CEFC infrastructure in an attempt to hide the source of the money. And you see this pattern repeated over and over and over again. On June 30th, 2017, Shanghai Huaxin sent 10 million from China to CEFC infrastructure. Then on August 4th, 2017, CEFC infrastructure wired 100,000 directly to Hunter Biden's own corporation, Owasco PC. Hunter's Owasco also received a half a million from another entity affiliated with Yi, State Energy HK Limited. State Energy HK appears to be part of Yi's personal slush fund to potentially commit bribery and launder money. The Chinese Communist Party affiliated entities may have bought influence with the Bidens that they couldn't get 
otherwise, and obviously for good reason. These alleged layering schemes are repetitive. They knew what they were doing, they knew how to do it, and they did it multiple times all over the world. If it looks complicated and sounds complicated, it was intentionally made to be complicated so you could not follow the money. What we're trying to do today is show you how to follow the money. <coughs> the Committee of Oversight, we need to pursue the Chinese relationship with the Serbian politician Vuk Jaramik, who first attempted to introduce Yi to the Bidens in 2015. From August 2015 to June of 2016, State Energy HK paid Jaramik's company $3 million. When Jaramik ran for UN Security General, who did he turn to? It appears he turned to Hunter Biden. On June 16, 2016, Jaramik wrote to Hunter asking if he could meet with the Vice President's National Security Advisor, Colin Call, related to the elections for UN Security General. The meeting appears to have happened because on July 2, 2016, Jaramik informed Hunter that my meeting, quote, with Colin did not last very long, but it, it didn't go too bad, I think. What is suboptimal is that the office of the vice president seems to be outside the decision-making loop on the UN Security General elections issue. These people didn't come to Hunter Biden because he understood world politics or that he was experienced in it or that he understood Chinese businesses. They wanted him for the access his last name gave them. Access to the Chinese Communist Party they couldn't otherwise get. In March of 2017, the same Chinese company that sent three million to Vuk Jeremik sent three million to one of Biden's associates, who siphoned off 30%, as Annie Biggs mentioned, we see that repeated over and over again, siphoned off 30% or a million dollars to Hunter Biden, James Biden, Hallie Biden, why, they, why she would need that, and an unknown Biden bank account. The committee has written to Vuk Jeremik and Rob Walker, but they have both refused to cooperate with the Oversight Committee. The Biden family needs to answer for this, and the DOG, DOJ needs to get off its ass and investigate. We've done the work for them so they can't screw it up now. If these allegations, any of these allegations are proven true, then someone with the last name Biden needs to be charged, prosecuted, and maybe spend a little time in prison to take to account and responsible for the actions they've taken today. Also, as mentioned by the chairman, I want to thank you. The legislative priorities we have of our committee, this is not a witch hunt. This is not a conspiracy theory. If there are anti-corruption laws that need to be made stronger, we will also do that. And I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for that, Representative Armstrong. <clears throat> well, thank you, Chairman Comer, and thanks for everybody for all the hard work. One of the common responses we hear about this investigation is that it all happened after Joe Biden left office. But that is not true. I'm going to detail a specific, specific set of payments made to members of the Biden family from Gabriel Popovich during Joe Biden's time as vice president. The committee has obtained the bank records for one of the companies of a close Biden associate, Rob Walker. Walker used his company, Robinson Walker LLC, to receive money from foreign companies. He then sent the money to various Bidens, including Hunter Biden, James Biden, Hallie Biden, and another Biden account. Walker's LLC received 17 payments from Bladen Enterprises Limited. The first payment was made in November of 2015, and the last payment, payment happened in May of 2017. 16 of the 17 payments occurred while Joe Biden was vice president. Bladen Enterprises is an aff affiliated with Rom Romanian businessman Gabriel Popovich. Popovich is a Romanian businessman who at the time of these payments was subject of a high profile co corruption investigation. In fact, he was convicted of one sub such obstruction charge in 2016. Popovich's company paid Walker LLC just over $3 million. And like clockwork, Walker dispersed approximately $1 million of that money to the Bidens. If that sounds familiar, it should. It's essentially the same structure Walker and the Biden family had with the Chinese money, a one-third cut. So what were the vice president's duties related to Romania at this time? Well, in May of 2014, Vice President Biden visited Romania and delivered a speech about corruption saying it can represent a clear and present danger, not only to a nation's economy, but to its very national security. And in September of 2015, Vice President Biden welcomed the Romanian president to the White House, and they spoke about anti-corruption policies. Five weeks later, the White House me after the White House meeting, Rog Walker's company's bank accounts began receiving payments from Popovich's company. Walker then sent a portion of each installment payment to Hunter Biden's business, Owasco and another company, EEIG, which was owned by close Hunter Biden associate, James Gilliard. 
another Biden bank account that Hunter claims is his, and one, and in one case, $10,000 to Haley Biden. Let's be clear, the $3 million sent to Rob Walker and dispersed to the Biden family appears completely separate and distinct from legal work performed by the law firm associated with Hunter Biden. This is simply not how legal fees are paid. I spent 10 years collecting legal fees. Nobody would pay or receive payments this way. It makes absolutely no sense. And again, the structure is the same as the Chinese payments. If it's for legal fees, why are the deals the same? In fact, it's very hard to come up with any legitimate business reason to conduct transactions with this type, in this type of complex way. Why would a separate payments go to Hunter Biden's business and to himself individually? Why would Walker transfer money from his business account to his personal account before distributing the money? Why are other Biden family receiving any of these payments? We need to understand more about this $3 million deal. But it's clear that the pattern shows two separate foreign countries paid millions of dollars through Walker, of which the Biden family received a one-third cut. These payments, their timing, the complexity of the money transfer or transactions all warrant further investigation into a possible influencing peddling scheme. This is simply not how legitimate business is conducted. And the fact that Vice President Joe Biden was lecturing the Romanian people about corruption while his family was being paid over a million dollars from a Romanian businessman who was being prosecuted for co co corruption would be laughable if it wasn't so troubling. Long time ago, I had a client got stopped. It's fifty thousand dollars in cash, eleven burner phones, and a bunch of shop, pawn shop money tickets in his car. And when he came in to see me, and I had, and I took him as a client, I said, "You have a problem." That is easy to understand. Financial transactions amongst seven, 17 different shell companies, banks all over the world are complex. We get it. But the pattern is emerging, and there is no reason that legitimate business is ever conducted in this matter. And with that. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Next, we have Representative Donald. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. Look, a couple things. Uh, first, what we're seeing here, what we're witnessing with uh, the Biden family, frankly, is just a web of concealment, of deception. So a lot of people would say corruption. But let's be very clear. You have this many companies involved, th this velocity of transactions, size of transactions. Like my colleagues have said, this is not how normal businesses operate. Um, I had the ability uh, with Chairman Comer and other members of the committee to go over to the Treasury building and review documents. And having read those documents, one thing is became pretty crystal clear, that there were many people who had serious questions about the transactions and about the velocity of these transactions. And they either get very, very, very deep into concealment, hiding money, shifting money. Um, and for the purpose, we don't know. Because one thing everybody in this room and the American people definitely know is that the Biden family doesn't really have a business. There is no business structure around this family, except politics. And since Joe Biden has spent decades in the Senate, served eight years as vice president, and is now president of the United States, and the family's getting money from various countries and foreign businesses through various shell companies and this web of LLCs, I mean, guys, you in the press, this is easy pickings. I'm giving you Pulitzer stuff here. Like, all you have to do is literally look at our memo and see the level of detail upon which they have created this. And it's very, it's very, very frustrating. We have now been able to clearly see that the Biden's associates, like Rob Walker, Eric Sherman, has been discussed, created at least 16 companies while Joe Biden was vice president of the United States. 16 companies created while he was vice president. Now the list is 20 and as we continue our investigation, that list is growing. And like I said before, the question is to serve what purpose? And the purpose of all these companies being created is to conceal money that the Biden family has been gaining, gain, gaining because Joe Biden has been sitting at the upper echelon of our politics for almost five decades. That is the entire purpose here. Here's an example of what I mean. You have Rosemont Seneca Partners. Rosemont Seneca Advisors, Rosemont Seneca Technology Partners, RSP Holdings, RSTP2 Alpha, RSTP2 Bravo, Rosemont Seneca Thornton, Rosemont Seneca Bohai. I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Bohai, B-O-H-A-I. And the list goes on and on. Cycling through this many companies serves 
no legitimate purpose. And as somebody who actually worked in banking, I did that long before I came here, whenever there was like this many companies just laying all over the place, and you see wire transfers, and cashier checks over here, going to random members of the family for no apparent purpose, at the size and velocity at which all of this was being conducted, the only logical conclusion of a financial professional is you are concealing money. Let me restate this. You are concealing money from either the IRS or from credit agencies or from other people in general. That's the only reason you set up a structure like this. Some of these companies were connected to Hunter's personal professional company, Oswego, or Skinny Atlas, Scale Atlas, however you want to pronounce it. And the list goes on and on. And Mr. Biggs, he talked about Hudson West 3 and some of those other issues that were going on as well. One thing I want to make sure is that all of this has happened and Joe Biden is aware. Nobody in this room can logically sit here and say that the President of the United States had no idea that these companies were being formed while he was Vice President of the United States. And I will add you, he was in probably in better mental shape then than he is today. You know, I'll throw that out there. And so what this committee is going to continue to do is pursue this investigation. We are going to continue to document and we're going to provide that information to all of you in the press. So to help you and frankly, you know, like Congresswoman May said, and probably help the DOJ along with their investigation. One quick note, it's interesting that the Department of Justice has been investigating Hunter Biden for quite some time. And we seem to just never really get anywhere. And so I think that's also interesting as well. I wonder what's going on at the Department of Justice. Uh, but that being said, the bottom line is there is no real business here. None. And let me also say this. Because I know there are many in this room who wanted to go down all the various um, uh, schemes that our colleagues on the other side of the aisle accused the former president of. Be very clear. The former president actually had a business, very big business. You could say it was his name. You could say it was his buildings. You could say it was wine. You could say it was branding. You could say it was The Apprentice. But he had a very big and legitimate business, which everybody in this room clearly knows and understands and can point to and say, ah, that's the thing, that thing over there. Joe Biden has no business except his position in politics. And it is the requirement of this committee to investigate that. We're going to continue to do that, and we're going to let the facts speak for themselves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Lastly, we'll have... Uh Jordan. Um, suspicious activity reports. The, the key word in that phrase is the word suspicious. There are 170 of those reports, many of them put together by the Treasury Department of our government in the Obama Biden administration. So 170 of those that the committee has reviewed, thousands of pages of bank records the committee has reviewed. And that has told us that there are now multiple, as Mr. Donalds just said, multiple LLCs receiving money from foreign entities and paying that money out to multiple members of the Biden family. And the fundamental question is the one Byron just raised. For what? What did they do? What was the business? What service did they provide? What value did they add? What did they do to warrant receipt of the money? That is the fundamental question. And no one seems to have an answer to that fundamental question. But Mr. Comer, Chairman Comer and the team, that's what we're looking into trying to get. And I would just say this too, why not just come clean? Why not just be honest with us? Why not tell us the truth? But I would tell you this, I think it's a pattern with this administration. They haven't been square with us, straight with us, straight with the American people about anything. They, told, they tell us the border is secure. We know it isn't. They tell us our debt ceiling bill is gonna hurt veterans. No, it doesn't. Joe Biden said during the campaign, that the letter from 51 former intel officials when he used it in the debate, he portrayed it as if it was organic. And we now know through another investigation that we're all working on that, in fact, it was coordinated. That letter from 51 former intel officials was coordinated with the Biden campaign. So much so the Biden campaign told Mike Morrell, here's the journalist. We want you to have uh, the story to the letter to first. Why not just be straight with this? Why not come clean? Why not tell us the truth? Tell the American people the truth. They deserve that from their government. Again, the fundamental question is, what did they do to warrant the receipt of millions and millions of dollars? Why did, why did Joe Biden's brother, why did Joe Biden's sister-in-law, why did Joe Biden's son, why did so many family members get the money? What did they do to, 
to warrant receipt of that money? That's the fundamental question. Chair McComber and the team have done great work and they're determined to get answers to those fundamental questions. I want to thank the committee. I want to thank the staff for all the time pouring through these documents. Uh, now we would like to entertain questions and, and I want to begin with the fourth largest newspaper in the state who I read somewhere was banned from the White House, but we'll start with the New York Post. You're always welcome here. <laughs> Well, first of all, with respect to, to President Biden, I don't think anyone in America who's watching C-SPAN or any other network that's covering this would think that it's just a coincidence that nine Biden family members have received money uh, for this influence peddling scheme. I mean, what, what as, as Representative Jordan and, and the other speakers said, what business is there? You know, the, the media has always said two things. First of all, the media has said, uh, many in the media have said that no transactions happened while Joe Biden was vice president. We've proven that wrong. Joe Biden said during 2020 that his family never took any money from China. Today we've proven that wrong, and you have it in your memorandum, the, the bank uh, transfers. So we believe that uh, the president has been involved in this from the very beginning, obviously. Uh, we're going to continue to look. Uh, there are what we've cited today and what we're updating you with today Four banks, those the result from four banks. We believe there are 12 banks. So right now, you could say that uh, we're in the, the beginning stages of this investigation, but many of you wrote, I read your stories, many of you wrote, not the New York Post, but many of you wrote that we would never get access to bank records because that's what the White House told you. And they said we'd never have access to the Treasury because that's what the White House and Jamie Raskin told you but we have the bank records. We're gonna get more bank records. We just got the bank records from going through the associates. We knew there were people that were wiring money, that were accepting the initial payments from, from our adversaries around the world, and then they were funneling the money to the Bidens through various LLCs. So we got the bank records through the back door. And we can tell you from the, the people that we're meeting with that were involved with uh, many of the, the schemes that uh, we're pretty confident that the president uh, was very knowledgeable of what his family was doing. You've seen pictures with these people. Uh, you've seen meetings. You've seen instances where the president took his son on trips during the last year of his vice presidency. And every account prior to today said, but none of those transactions happened while he was vice president. Uh, we just laid out that 16 of the 17 payments to the Bidens from Romania occurred while Joe Biden was vice president. With res the second question with respect to the, to the FBI, this is uh, Senator Grassley's whistleblower. I've reviewed the transcript. Uh, we have given the FBI until noon today to provide that document, that very specific document. And we're gonna let the ball be in the FBI's court. And then Senator, and I, Senator Grassley and I, if the FBI for some reason does not comply, uh, with our subpoena, then Senator Grassley and I will, will discuss the next step. Next question. Mr. Chairman, yeah. Mark Tapscott, the Epoch Times. There have been a number of scandals in our country. Mm -hmm. You just said that you're in the beginning stages of this, but I wonder if you or perhaps one of your colleagues can put this into a historical context. Yeah. I mean, look, I think we've already provided, despite a few articles saying that this committee, I mean, first, the, the, the you know, I hate to be critical of the media, but I mean, a lot of you honestly deserve it, so. But, the, but, but with respect, you know, they said, well, there was, 
this began in November. We had a press conference here. And at that time, I think the Associated Press and other outlets were saying that the laptop was Russian disinformation still at that point. And they were saying that this were conspiracy theories. And they were saying that none of the money ever happened while Joe Biden was, was vice president. We've dismissed all of that. We have evidence. That's something, again, I don't think a lot of you are used to with respect to congressional investigation. We have evidence. And you, you look at the, the congressional scandals of the past. You, you look at Watergate and things like that. The congressional committees didn't find out about the, the, the Watergate. The, the press found out about it. And instead of the press asking Joe Biden, when we disclosed a month ago that through the Robinson Walker account, three or four Biden family members received $1.3 million, somebody yelled out, what do you think about uh, your family receiving money from China? And he said, that's not true. And nobody pressed him again. So I don't think the media is playing the same role that it used to play with respect to investigative reporting. And, and it, it's been very difficult. We're, we're fighting the Biden attorneys. We're fighting the DOJ. We're fighting the FBI. We're fighting a lot of the media. And we're just trying to be transparent. The White House said today that this was a political stunt. That's what little Ian Sam said. This was a political stunt by Comer. A press conference? A political stunt? We're actually giving you a memorandum with evidence. So we're trying to be transparent. We're leading a credible investigation, as Ms. May said. And I, I think that uh, from a historical standpoint, we've never seen a presidential family receive these sums of money from adversaries around the world. And we're just talking about a couple of countries today. I mean, if, if, if you look at the, the countries that this family was influence peddling in, China's probably the most reputable country on the list, if that tells you anything. So I, I think we're making a lot of progress in less than 100 days. One difference between us and the, and the work that the Senate did is we have subpoena power, and we got the bank records, and we're going to get more bank records, and we're going to have more whistleblowers come forward. A few weeks ago, the last thing I'll say to answer the question, we said, uh, I mentioned whistleblowers a couple of weeks ago, and Jamie Raskin said there were no whistleblowers. There are two whistleblowers that have come forward now. One with the IRS and one with the DOJ. So, Chairman, Chairman, so it sounds like you all are still trying to prove President Biden's direct involvement here, and you spoke a little bit, I know, across the aisle about how you want to be Yeah, it, it would be hard for me to believe that President that, that Hunter Biden was so charismatic that uh, he could convince uh, foreign nationals to wire millions of dollars into not just his account, but uh, eight of his family members' account. Uh, we believe that there was a return on the investment uh, for the investment that these countries were, were wiring money to the various Biden family members. And why were they, cons why, as Representative Donald said, why would you create all these companies? I don't think a lot of people uh, understand the complexity of these businesses you if, if you're doing something legitimate if you're providing something of value why not just get the payment directly from the the payer why why do you have to funnel it through three or four different uh bank accounts so that's what uh you know, th there's an odd pattern that's developing here Well, we know that the president during the, the vice president during the last year of the Obama administration traveled around the world. He talked a lot about foreign aid in different countries. Talked a lot about uh, American policy, American assistance, and uh, these are the part of the types of policies. You look at uh, some of the decisions they, that Joe Biden's made as president. Uh, there are uh, many decisions that we would uh, make a strong argument that put China first and America last. So these are the types of decisions. We'll get into more of those later. Yes. We mentioned a little bit about how, how I'm trying to find all the numbers. It's about ten million dollars or more. Is that is that what you're thinking? So far. So far. Mm -hmm. And of course, the White House is, is putting this off, playing this off as down, trying to downplay it. What message would you have for the president himself? If these were legitimate payment, and those are legitimate businesses that your family created then I would assume you have invoices. I would assume that you would have uh, 
by you know uh, books and, and business models and, and things like that to tell us what the what the businesses actually were and uh, I think that's something if I instead of just attacking us for having the audacity to investigate this and be tr as transparent as we can possibly be with the with the media then then maybe he should answer questions as to what exactly his family did to receive this money and why so many of his family members received money I, I don't think that's normal behavior. I don't think the person watching this on C-SPAN who's struggling to work uh, over 40 hours a week pay their bills I don't think their family members get wires from uh, from adversaries around the world so I, I think the American people understand that this stinks and I think they appreciate what we're doing here uh, Annie. We're going to look at everything when we get ready to uh, introduce the legislation to ban influence peddling. If you go back to Jimmy Carter's brother, Billy Carter, mm -hmm. receiving money from Libya, this has been a pattern for a long time. Republicans and Democrats have both complained about presidents' families receiving money. But the way that the Bidens have set this up, you know, there's no business. President Carter's brother got the money directly from Libya. I've already reviewed that. And Joe Biden, ironically, was on the committee that investigated President Carter's brother when, when that took place. The, uh, the president, former President Trump's son-in-law had some business deals, right? As Byron Donald said, we know what his businesses were. I'm not saying whether I agreed with what he did or not, but I actually know what his businesses are. What are the Biden businesses? That's the question. What business what we read in the press about, well, these were legitimate business deals that were done after Joe Biden was president. That's not true. These were set up when Joe Biden was vice president. And, and what is the business, Annie? What business are they in? Well, since you asked, <laughs> I will tell you. Uh, Joe Biden's son, Joe Biden's brother, Joe Biden's brother's wife, Hunter Biden's girlfriend or Bo Biden's widow, however you wanted to write that, Hunter Biden's ex-wife, Hunter Biden's current wife, and three children of the president's son and the president's brother. So we're talking about grandchild, a grandchild. That's odd. Most people that work hard every day, grandchild doesn't get a wire from a foreign national or anything like that. So uh, that'll conclude our, our question and answers. We're accessible. Feel free to come up to any member on the committee. We'll answer any questions you have. I want to thank Congressman Jordan for his work. Uh, that, that they're doing uh, with respect to uh, the weaponization of the federal government. And I'm, I'm sure that everyone will be available to answer your questions today. Thank you. A Russian man claiming to hold top-level secrets about Russian advanced bombers has just turned up at the U.S. southern border, seeking asylum. The man claims to have been an engineer at a production facility over in the city of Kazan. And he says that he possesses top-secret information about the White Swan Tu-160 which is the most advanced bomber in the Russian arsenal. U.S. border officials, they interviewed the man, and they determined that his story was in fact credible and eventually passed him off to the FBI, who are still in the process of interrogating him right now. However, analysts have pointed out that the fact that the story was even leaked to the public is an indication that perhaps the American government is encouraging other Russians who also hold top-level secrets to also escape to America. And if you thought that was interesting, well then you should click on that button below this video and check out Epic TV, one of the best no censorship video platforms on the internet.